Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. Yesterday in my Facebook group I asked which kind of die would people like me to use in my next video and the one that got the most votes was star dies. So I've made this card for you. I used this die which is uh, a sort of aperture die. It makes little dashes and little star holes and then these three star dies. But as yesterday I was talking about how to make aperture dies without an aperture die, I thought I would do that for you today with this card. So this one's really simple to do. You just take a panel of cardstock, put your die on, run it through your die cutting machine and it makes the little stitches and the little stars and then you can back it however you want. But what if you haven't got one of these? I've got two methods to show you to get the dotty dashy lines but they both start by cutting stars out of your panel. So if you want to get this look, where they're off to the right hand side, I'd suggest doing this. You can pop a ruler here just to make sure you stay within the area that you want to stay within. And with a sharp pencil, very lightly draw one, two or three wavy lines in this portion of your card. You can rub these out later, although you might not need to if you do them light enough. And then pop your stars on somewhere along your wiggly lines and take something that is low tack, like sticky notes or low tack tape and secure them and then run that through your die cutting machine. So you can remove your stars or whatever shape, obviously you can do this with whatever shape you like. You can keep those for use on another project and then run them through again to create a few more holes if that's what you'd like. You can space them out so they look randomly scattered down the card or you can make them more regular if that's your thing. So I want three of the big stars, so we've got that rule of thirds, that rule of three, and then two more of the little stars, and that gives me six little stars. So again, we're going for multiples of three, which is something that's very pleasing to the human brain and the human eye. So there we go, now we've cut our apertures. At this stage, if you want to, you can rub out your pencil marks. I find that the sticky notes actually lift some of the pencil marks, so I'm not left with many. You can leave them if you want, if you need them for the next stage. So for the card that I'm going to make to completion today, I'm going to use a paper piercer to pierce some dots in a trail around these stars. I've got a thick piece of foam here, which is great for piercing into. This makes quite big holes, but if you want smaller holes, you could use a pin. So all I'm going to do is start up here. I'm not going to go too close to the stars that I've cut because it, if you put a hole here too close, it will mess up the edge of your star. But I'm going to just trail in a curve all the way down. You can follow the pencil lines if you've still got them. If you haven't, you could draw some more on if you wanted to, or you could just go rogue and freehand it. You can leave even spaces between the dots, or you can spread them out a bit. You don't have to connect all your stars if you don't want to. You can have some floating in a space unattached. If you find that two trails is enough, see I went a bit close there and I've smushed the edge of my star, but we can live with that. You could just add a few trails that don't appear to go anywhere. You could leave it like this for now. And when you've added your embellishments, you could put a few more holes in where you want them. So that's one way of doing that. Another way of adding the trails 
is to use a cold fuse tool so you're not going to heat this up and just draw some trails this has got the toothy circle tip on it and you can just carefully draw some trails like this use your elbow bend from your elbow rather than your wrist and you'll get nice smooth curves and you can get some good trails like that with both of these methods i definitely recommend doing the die cutting before the poking or the trailing because if you poke first and then die cut the die cutting process will flatten out the marks you've made even the little holes here so die cut first then trail but with the fuse tool just be careful as you trail over the die cut hole not to go too fast because you might sort of rip up the hole i find putting a bit of thinnish craft foam under this actually helps you get quite a good impression and I do believe there is a sewing tool that has a similar end to it. I don't know what it's called, but someone suggested it on the shorts video where I demonstrated this technique. So check that short out if you want to know, because it, it's in the comments. Somebody suggested a sewing related tool that will do the same thing. So the next thing I'm going to do with my panel here is add a bit of a border by scoring I've got this on the metric side and I'm going to score at half a centimeter in it's just a convenient distance from the edge all the way around make sure it's tucked right into the corner hold it still and score on the edge and that just gives it a nice interesting border like that on this card the holes that the die made were quite small on this one the stars are fairly large so it might be worth creating a nice bit of mixed media to go behind your stars but as i'm doing a bit of mixed media for my stars on the front i'm going to stick with this silver paper it's, but as usual i'm going to separate my panel from my background using craft foam just gives it a lovely bit of dimension and depth so I've cut a piece of the silver card so that it covers all the apertures that I've made stick that on there and now I've got a lovely silvery star background and to keep everything level I'm going to pop another bit of card on here and then put the whole thing on my card base just using some tape runner So this card is five by seven inches. This one is slightly smaller because it suited the die better, I felt. But the beauty of doing it this way, your own way, is that uh, you can make the card whatever size you like. If some of your holes look like they've been a bit squished, you can just pop your paper piercer in again or your pen or whatever you're using and give them a wiggle and open them up again. So I'm going to cut my stars out of a bit of mixed media. That's what I'm going to create now. And I'm using Catherine Pooler inks from the party collection. I've got Pixie Dust and Cummerbund. You could obviously use whatever colours you like. Just going to blend on a nice light application of the pixie dust this is mixed media paper which is great for blending these inks on now I've got this star stencil I think this is an Amazon find and I'm going to blend on a little bit of cummerbund and you get this nice dark indigo -y color not too much because I don't want it too dark and that looks fine. To give my stars a bit of sparkle, I'm going to do some heat embossing with some super fine silver embossing powder. I'm gonna go over it with corn flour, as usual, to get rid of any static or greasy fingerprints. And then I've got this, uh, I think it's meant to be thread. I think it's an old Stampin' Up stamp. I got it from a charity shop. 
and I'm going to ink it up with Versamark and just add some here and there so that when I cut my stars I can make sure each one has grabbed a bit of the embossing. So there we've got some beautiful, fine, traily, thready embossing. So now I can choose some bits to cut my stars from and run that through the die cutting machine. So here we have our stars ready to rock and roll. I want to arrange them in such a way that they don't cover up too much of my aperture cutting and dotting. If you wanted to make sure that lots of your apertures are peeking out behind your stars, you could always plot this out more carefully before you start. I think that will do. So to give these a bit of extra dimension, I'm going to pop them up on craft foam or foam tape. This will obviously probably make them too expensive to go through the post. So this might be a card that I'd hand deliver. Or if it was going with a present, that wouldn't matter. Pop it in the parcel. Obviously, you can arrange these on the page however you want them. If there's a particularly dodgy bit of piercing, you could always use these to cover that up. And that one needs to go over a little bit more. It's hanging off too near the edge. For my sentiment, I use my typewriter to type you're a star. So this would make a good congratulations card or a thank you card for someone. And I cut it out using this stitched rectangle die. On my original card, I put it on top of this star here. And that worked quite nicely. But you could always add it a bit further down if you wanted. Put it in line with your stars. Or you could make it go this way. That's interesting thought, isn't it? You could pop that there. So I'm going to pop a bit of craft foam behind this as well. And I'm going to pop it on here between these stars. Is that in the right place? I think it needs to shuffle over ever so slightly. I think on this one, just because I can, I'm going to add some Nouveau Glitter Drops. This is White Blizzard. It dries clear but has iridescent glitter in it. This will just add a little bit of extra something and again you could always use this to cover up any dodgy bits of piercing. So there we are two cards with the same design idea but made using different techniques. One with a pre-made aperture die and one with homemade combination of dies to create an aperture. I'm really pleased with them both. I do hope you've enjoyed today's video and that you've found it helpful and it's given you some ideas of ways to create an aperture look with your own dies. If it has, please do leave a thumbs up and a comment. Come to the Facebook group to share your makes and I will see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.